So, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Spiros Trigazis from uh, CERN. I'm a software engineer there. And I'm going to talk to you about our container service that we are basing on Fedora Atomic Host and the AppStream project that we are using, uh, which is an OpenStack service. So, the OpenStack service that we use is OpenStack Magnum. And I'm also the project team lead of the project, so I must talk about it because if I don't, who else is going to do it? So Magnum is a community project from OpenStack. And if you're not familiar with OpenStack, I will simplify random words that you see that are OpenStack uh, project names. So Magnum is using Keystone credentials. It's, it means that it is, it's using the um, centralized authentication method of OpenStack, which on the back end can be Kerberos or um, uh, you can use a free API or Active Directory. So this is like the entry point of uh, applications that use uh, that they develop uh, that are developed based on OpenStack. Um, Magnum offers different cluster types. So we have uh, Kubernetes, which is by far the most popular one, Docker Swarm, and Mesos and DCS, which are the least popular, at least from our from our perspective. And the way that um, Magnum offers multi-tenancy is, is actually the opposite. It's single tenancy. Every user has its own cluster, and he's responsible for the applications that are running there. And it's guaranteed that uh, he has uh, control. Uh, the machines that are run their applications are running only their code. So it could be virtual machines or physical servers that they own. Um, these are some cool logos from the container orchestrations that we support with uh, like 70% of the users are using Kubernetes, another 20% are using Docker Swarm, and there are some outliers, I would say, using uh, Mesos or DCS. Uh, in, our in our organization at CERN, we have some Mesos users, but they are not using uh, uh, OpenStack. They are deploying uh, on physical servers uh, their own infrastructure. Some terminology about the project. Uh, a cluster is made up of compute instances, virtual or physical, networks that are managed by the Neutron service of OpenStack, security groups, which are part of Neutron, and block storage uh, based on the Cinder service, on the Cinder project, other resources like load balancers, um, which are based on Octavia, and on the back end could be um, whatever you, solution you use, maybe Open Daylight, uh, tungsten, tungsten Fabric, or some, some solution based on OpenVSwitch. And the one that I haven't mentioned, which is a new addition to us, is a shared file systems uh, that will have integration with uh, CFFS and the Manila project of uh, OpenStack, which basically it's a client for uh, Ceph and CFFS. Uh, also, the cluster is where your containers are running. So you see all these entities that are base infrastructure as a single thing, and you talk uh, to the cluster uh, with the API. Either it is the Kubernetes API or the Docker Swarm API, or the the Marathon API that it's based that is used by Mesos and DCS. Uh, the project is focusing on lifecycle operation. Operations uh, like scaling up and down, not auto scaling yet, I like to hope, upgrading clusters, and uh, healing or replacing nodes. So, usually, if a node doesn't work uh, it, and you have 500 nodes, it's tedious to fix a node, uh, at least in our case, and it's much easier to replace it, drain it from Kubernetes or Docker, and uh, just create another physical instance or, v or VM. Um, yeah. Also, in each cluster, we try to provide the self-contained monitoring solution. So every cluster has its own dashboards that monitors applications and the underlying infrastructure, like uh, operating system metrics and uh, uh, metrics um, from the applications that uh, the users defined. Um, the strongest selling point uh, from the project is that uh, it doesn't wrap the upstream APIs of Docker and uh, Kubernetes. So we, you can use uh, Magnum to just bootstrap the cluster and then do some low-level operations on it. But after that, you're using uh, Docker and uh, kubectl as you're, you're used to and the native APIs. 
Uh, Magnum does all the PK infrastructure for uh, all of these projects. Uh, Kubernetes has the most uh, complicated one, but also you can run Mesos and the Docker, the Docker daemon behind TLS. And Magnum uh, creates those credentials, and then with a single command that I will demonstrate later, you can retrieve uh, all the certificates required to access securely the cluster. This is the architecture, but we are not talking about because this is not for this audience. Uh, but um, very briefly on the right, it's uh, the Magnum client and the interaction with OpenStack. And on the right box is all the components that are used in OpenStack, which are, which are I'm not going to mention here. And on the left, it's the cluster that has uh, Docker, the operating system, and the applications. And then when the bootstrap of the cluster is done, uh, the user is going on the left and using the REST APIs uh, that are common in public clouds, private clouds, and in solutions that you have deployed uh, on your own. Um, I will mention a few of these features briefly. Um, um, so what we did um, a year ago, uh, I would say, I, th I think, it's uh, running everything in containers. Um, and this is why I'm doing this presentation. Because we're starting using the stock Fedora Atomic project. We don't modify it whatsoever. We take the QCOWs or raw images uh, from getfedora.org. And then whatever we need to, um, any customization or additional features that we want to offer to the users, um, they're running in containers. So when I say we, uh, we are operators of uh, clouds that we offer a service. And then the users deploy containers, which are the application containers that they run their web applications or analytics or whatever they want. Um, also, we added the full Prometheus uh, stack before. Um, we did that before the Prometheus operator was up. So it's something that we did on our own. And it's basically what the Prometheus operator is, is doing. And we are planning to move on that. Uh, we added the upstream Kubernetes dashboard and Core DNS even before becoming uh, general available. Core DNS is, is uh, the replacement of kubedns in Kubernetes that you can use uh, to have um, DNS resolution in Kubernetes clusters. And another important feature that we are adding, it's not there yet, it's uh, this one, it's cluster federation. Oh, sorry. It's a cluster federation. That it means that you can join different Kubernetes clusters in the single data center or Kubernetes clusters in different data centers. And I will talk about uh, this one in the use cases. And what you're working also on is um, adding different container runtimes. At the moment, everything is based on Docker and is based on Docker that is running, uh, that it's included in the Fedora Atomic host. Um, I'm finishing with Magnum. So why we use Magnum uh, and why someone else may want to use it? Um, if you haven't understand at the moment what it does, but you have experience with GKE or the um, AWS Kubernetes service, it's a very similar product or project in our case that you can someone create can create a product product or offer it as a service to users. Uh, we are. Um, a public organization, so we just uh, use open source solutions for all these kind of things. And it makes sense for users that, for organizations that have uh, organization that have at least five users, and when I say users, like different applications that maybe ma more users are managing, and you may need uh, more than 10 clusters, because if you can name your clusters, it's better, and you have some experience, it's better to manage them uh, by hand or with Ansible or with something else. Um, if um, you have an OpenStack cloud and you want to add Magnum, accounting comes for free. So it means whatever accounting you have, someone has done with VMs, this can extend to, the, to container clusters because um, each cluster uh, belongs to a project or a user, so accounting doesn't break. Um, also, it's a very. I will have noticed that it's a very easy entry point for new users. Um, so when users start to um, experimenting with containers, they installed probably Docker on their uh, laptop and try some applications there. And then it's very easy for them to switch um, to at least to Docker Swarm. And then when they try to have more than three containers in their application, they immediately go to Kubernetes and they stay there forever. <laughs> um, 
Also, what's very important to us, and it's also I'm here, as I said, it's um, the offering, uh, all the deployment that we have for running uh, Kubernetes and other engines is based around Fedora Atomic, so we control very hard uh, um, what is the operating system that we allow, we allow to get into our data center. And some notes from an operator's perspective on what uh, someone should pay attention to when they run uh, Magnum or any other container service that's offered to other users and they're not consuming themselves. The network design needs um, a, a lot of attention. So to simplify things and assuming that users have a full OpenStack cloud with all the features and private and tenant networks are cheap and they create them uh, as they need, you have a, priv a private network uh, per cluster and optionally, we have a floating APs on all nodes. We also have clusters that don't have, they're not reachable from the outside, which is perfect for compute uh, tasks and not uh, burn uh, public APs. And also what is very important to have a complete offering with uh, Kubernetes, at least, is to have a uh, load balancing as a service and load balancing for master. One case is to have uh, bigger clusters and scale the master nodes and have HA. And the other case is uh, that you want to expose uh, services uh, on the internet without uh, using the port of the nodes. Another cru crucial part that comes on day two is the container registry. Uh, at CERN, we are a heavy CentOS shop, not Fedora, but uh, we started to love it. Uh, we started pushing the team that manages the operating systems uh, in our organization to accept Fedora as well. So we have our own Koji and our own packages, and we recommend the users to build containers based on CentOS or Fedora and host them in our own registry, not Docker.io or other registries outside. So we can track down uh, everything that happens in our data center. And when people leave the organization, uh, we can ha still have access to their images and not uh, trying to, to poke around uh, with uh, Docker.io or even Way I.O. and ask for credentials. And also this improves latency, but um, in some organization this is not an issue. Um, also, someone must notice that when you provide a self-contained service like, um, like this one with Magnum and container clusters, in a way you provide software. So we must test and uh, verify that works for us, uh, the operating system. And since we're using Atomic, we have to test only once uh, because we use it for all use cases. And we also need to test uh, the Kubernetes containers or Docker containers uh, that are running uh, as part of the cluster. And what we need to also do is upgrade uh, regularly uh, because uh, all the configuration parameters and uh, the way that the clusters are deployed are changed uh, rapidly every uh, couple of months. So essentially, it has a very fast page for link the Docker and the Kubernetes space. And I have a couple of slides on what the work that we're doing with the Atomic Working Group and how we ended up there. So the reason that um, we chose it is uh, before going to Project Atomic, we were building Fedora on our own. Uh, OpenStack has a project called Disk Image Builder that uh, builds QCOWs that are designed to run on OpenStack. And that meant that every time that the kernel changed, every time that uh, there was a security fix, we had to rebuild and test again uh, if the build procedure was uh, proper. And obviously, all this work is done by uh, the Fedora project and the CentOS project, if you use CentOS. So we tried to remove all the specificities that we had in the base image, and uh, we went uh, for Fedora Atomic, which is like uh, the minimal layer. And when we started, Kubernetes was also included in the image, and that was convenient, but then when you wanted to, to bump versions, it wasn't very convenient because um, um, the packages should be built and then included in a, uh, in a Fedora Atomic release and then published uh, um, on getfedora.org, and then we had to, to test again, etc. And when we switch, when the proje project Atomic decided to even minimize more uh, the base operating system, we forced ourselves forced ourselves to use only read-only containers to extend the host. 
And this was a very good exercise because uh, it made it, it introduces to us a lot of discipline and because we will use system containers that I'll mention in a couple of slides, these containers are read-only, so you must design very carefully what you want to do. Uh, another great advantage is that if something breaks in the operating system, we ask Fedora project. We do, the users don't ask us that we build uh, um, the operating system image. And of course, we don't have to maintain our CI anymore, that it was uh, very painful because we had to store artifacts, rotate them, make sure that we don't point the users to, um, uh, to old operating systems. But when you start using a lot of the stock project, you eventually become a contributor. Uh, personally, I like it very much. And what I ended up is uh, co-maintaining the Kubernetes package for Fedora and CentOS. And we, uh, I'm using the same dist git as mentioned uh, two days ago uh, for a couple of months. So the dist git for CentOS and Fedora is exactly the same. And um, it works uh, well, pretty well so far, so whatever changes I need um, to make um, in, uh, in, Fedora, in the Fedora package, they just go straight into CentOS and it hasn't break uh, at any time at the moment. And what we're doing now that we move to system containers is uh, instead of, we, we're running, for example, Fedora 28 at the moment, but uh, Kubernetes that comes from uh, Koji and the Fedora repos is a uh, rawhide. So um, for some use cases like this, uh, we are using uh, the stable branch of Fedora, but uh, rawhide for the latest uh, package that we want. But uh, when these packages are graduating to the stable release, uh, we switch uh, to Fedora 28 or whatever the stable one is. Um, but uh, with the Kubernetes release base, sometimes this, this doesn't happen and it holds only for a, for a month or so. Um, we are also early testers of Scopio and the atomic utilities uh, because we, with system containers, we rely a lot of them and we contribute a lot to the system containers uh, 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 repo from Project Atomic in GitHub. Um, I haven't seen any talks about system containers and probably this is going to change slightly or heavily with Fedora Core and we are looking forward to it. Uh, but at least this is what we have now, and uh, we are investigating how we will we'll replace it when we move to Fedora Core on when and if the atomic utilities are going to be removed. So the first example is how to install Kublet. Uh, Kublet is like the most fun, the most the, the core component of Kubernetes that runs on every worker node and usually in the masters because also the control plane of Kubernetes runs on containers that are managed by Kubernetes. Um, so this is pulling Kublet from uh, the Fedora registry, and it's using OS3 as a backend instead of storing the image uh, in Docker. And minus minus system means uh, that it's a system container and it's like a super privileged container. And also in, in the spec of um, on the config JSON of the OCI image, uh, we have kept only the mount namespace, and we have given almost all capabilities that we could give uh, to Kublet. And then you just install, and it's like, from the user perspective, from, from the configuration perspective better, uh, it's like having the package installed. So you just go to ETC Kubernetes and modify the parameters that you want, and then you start uh, your system with systemctl uh, service. Um, for Docker Swarm clusters, that we wanted, a fa we wanted a faster pace for Docker. For Kubernetes, the stock Docker that uh, offered in uh, Atomic is fine, but for Docker Swarm and for people that wanted to use li things like multi-stage build with Docker and um, not Pod1, um, we wanted a newer uh, Docker version. So we used the Fedora Docker system container and we used uh, the repos from uh, Docker uh, from Docker Inc and we install uh, the version that we want. At the moment, I think we run 17.09. We haven't moved to 18 yet. And then you just start it uh, as a systemd uh, service. Um, on the bottom uh, on the bottom box, uh, it's a snapshot uh, from uh, a Kubernetes master node. So all the components, so Kubernetes and friends, are running in system containers which is the API Server Control Manager and Scheduler, plus etcd and Flannel for the overlay network. 
And at the moment, as you can see, we have even 111.1 for uh, Kubernetes. A couple of days, 111.2 was released, but uh, in this way, it's very easy to upgrade. We just rebase the container that we want um, on top of that, and we restart uh, only the containers, and it works fine. Um, and the last container is the one that we wrote on, on our own, which is a specific uh, service process that runs on all nodes in, uh, in OpenStack machines that you want to configure um, containers, um, just to configure nodes. So now about the CERN container service. Everything is based on OpenStack in our cloud. And I have a typo. We have 100,000 cores more, as you can see in the box, not in the letters. But the important thing for this talk is that we have uh, 1,500 Fedora Atomic 27 VMs. We have occasional bursts to 3,000. Uh, but um, this is like a more conservative um, uh, layout. Um, uh, of, of our service, um, only for experiments or before a conference that um, physicists are going to do extra analysis, we deploy more nodes. And in the middle of um, the screenshot that I have here, you can see that we have uh, 450 Magnum clusters. Um, so for the Magnum deployment, um, the first work that we needed to do is to integrate containers with the CERN cloud, meaning the changes uh, that require um, uh, software for physics analysis. Specifically, we have a, an in-house uh, file system called CVMFS that uh, is used to distribute uh, software and uh, run uh, root analysis, which is a, a programming language for the physics analysis. And we also added all the services that we required for CERN to install specific certificates in all the hosts uh, as uh, system containers. This layout is a bit old. I think I need to, to upgrade it. But uh, after 2016, we ran the service in production. And we had uh, only a couple of upgrades for adding uh, new features. But uh, the layout of the service hasn't changed yet uh, since then. So how users interact with our container service? We have uh, cluster templates, which are describing what clusters look like, apart from number of nodes and uh, size of the VMs. And these are the public cluster templates that we offer to users. We have an, a an HA and a non-HA solution. So if someone has five nodes, doesn't have to burn more uh, uh, quota and more cores to have a HA for master nodes. And with three commands, uh, the important part is that with three commands, we offer to users kubectl or docker. So one command is cluster create, and then they can monitor with cluster list what's the status. And when it reaches create complete, they can just uh, do cluster config and retrieve all the credentials. And then they can talk with a native API um, and deploy their applications. Some use cases and some very nice pictures that uh, my colleague created. And uh, how are we using containers at CERN? Before, I was talking about OpenStack and what many people are doing, including us, but why we need it. Um, we need containers to deploy easily uh, batch, uh, batch farms. So we have a lot of uh, physics data to process and a lot of uh, simulations that we need to do. And for this kind of system, we use uh, Condor or uh, HD Condor or before LSF. And with uh, Kubernetes, uh, it's much easier to scale out and even scale to public clouds, as I will mention later. Um, also, with uh, Jupyter and um, Python notebooks and R notebooks, and user analysis is done interactively on the web browser in most of our cases now. And uh, the Jupyter project, is, uh, it, it has done a lot of work uh, in deploying um, uh, on top of uh, Kubernetes. So we have a, a group uh, that is managing a centralized service offering uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Other use cases that are wrapping up is machine learning and when we try to add the uh, GPUs. And of course, uh, we, the infrastructure folks, are using it a lot for um, uh, running simple web applications, continuous integration and deployment, run OpenStack itself. So we start for a few physical machines, deploy OpenStack, and then we add more compute nodes, which run VMs, and those VMs run OpenStack again. And those VMs create clusters, 
and those clusters that are running on OpenStack maybe run OpenStack again. So we'll, I think we are in th three layer sandwich there. And finally, I will de describe uh, three use cases uh, that we are using Kubernetes and everything runs on Fedora Atomic. Um, the first one that we did recently is running Spark uh, on, on Kubernetes. Um, Spark is using some resource providers as backends. So the m first one that was introduced was Yarn, which is from the Apache uh, ecosystem. But um, uh, when Kubernetes became popular, they added a driver for Spark to talk uh, directly to Kubernetes and submit jobs uh, to Kubernetes. Um, so you, um, the data analytics working group that I, sh I borrowed this uh, slide um, is basic, is creating Maglum clusters, and then uh, the Spark community create the Spark operator, which is a way to a more easy way to manage Spark, and they submit jobs uh, uh, to Kubernetes, and um, they have done integration with shared file systems to share the artifacts of uh, the analysis later on. Uh, recently, that I mentioned that we have usually bursts. bursts um, the, um, th this group created the 1,000 node clusters, so we just booted in uh, 20 minutes 1,000 node cluster with around 4,000 cores, uh, or not 4,000, uh, 2,000 cores in total to run a big Kubernetes cluster that uh, was used in full capacity for analysis with Spark. As I said, again, everything on Fedora Atomic. Um, another use case is uh, reusable analysis. So in the, early, the, in the beginning of um, uh, this century, um, the um, storage was not a problem. So we could store data. And then when users wanted to do some computations, uh, they could do it how many times they wanted. And they could just do it, uh, the analysis on demand. But now with the uh, highest data rate, what we want to do, um, what CERN wants to do is to reuse analysis that has done before. And th this group that manages uh, this uh, Rihanna and uh, Rika's project, which is uh, like an acronym from reusable analysis platform, um, they want to they use container images as artifacts. So when someone has done an analysis and it has also the results and the data that he used for the analysis, it creates a Docker image and pushes it in a registry. And um, all, uh, all, all the workflow is managed uh, by Kubernetes jobs. And um, uh, each, each layer is a, is a self-contained job that they are submitting uh, to Kubernetes uh, that runs on our service. Um, I think this is as far as I can go to, to explain what it is. But um, if you're interested, we can uh, sync later. Uh, but uh, th this demonstrates that um, uh, the solution that we have developed and, and the modular uh, way that Kubernetes is created and the compatibility that we have with the latest kernel of Fedora has, uh, has allowed us to use all shared file systems that we have, which is one, it's called EOS, which is CERN specific, and it hosts the largest amount of data that we have, around 200 petabytes. Also, we have CFFS and CVMFS to distribute software, and all these are integrated and running uh, easily with Kubernetes and on Fedora Atomic Host. And the third use case that we recently did is um, federated Kubernetes clusters. So in uh, the right picture, you can see that we have uh, a host cluster that is run at CERN, and it runs the control plane of the batch system. And the two... Uh, the, the two Kubernetes clusters on the top are running again on the CERN cloud, but on a different corner in the data center. And the third one is run on the T system cloud, uh, which is again, which is OpenStack, but uh, this is just a coincidence. And um, the team that's running uh, the batch farm uh, de deployed their um, by hand the Kubernetes cluster, and then all these clusters joined the host cluster at CERN. So when we have um, compute uh, deficit, let's say, and we want to add more compute capacity, we just go to any public cloud that can offer Kubernetes to us. And with the same way that we have deployed uh, the batch system at CERN, we can extend it and deploy it to the public cloud and join and submit jobs and uh, leverage the compute capacity. 
Th this is ideal for compute jobs, for compute intensive jobs. When you want to, to transfer a lot of data, it, this is another story because then you have to pay for the, all the data and transfer. But um, for simulations, which we're doing a lot of Monte Carlo simulations, is perfect. So a conclusion is that um, this talk was from the user's perspective. And what I want to highlight is Fedora Atomic and Fedora, it just works for us. Uh, it's not the bleeding edge. It's just uh, a, a, a minimal distro that worked for us very well. And when I say yes, now I don't include only uh, CERN, but also the OpenStack community that is using our project. Everyone is using the same images, and we're happy with, with it, and we just benefit from all the work done uh, in the project upstream. And its immutable state allows us to sync even operators in different sites. We can sync and share exactly the same operating systems, and tests that are done, done in one data center just work in another easily, which might be uh, a lot of different. And as a closing note, and the reason that we moved uh, this talk here is that we are looking forward to Fedora Core. Uh, because so far, we had a lot of users saying uh, we are mostly deploying using Fedora Atomic, but we need to use CoreOS because our organization uses it and uh, because uh, it has a bigger community um, uh, for on the container ecosystem. So now, with this convergence, we are very happy and we don't have to uh, hear about these complaints again. And I will just leave here questions if you have about Magnum and to promote my project. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any questions? We do upgrades, uh, but we, when we do an upgrade in the cluster, we don't upgrade the, the node in place. We delete the nodes. Uh, in some cases, uh, that we didn't have a clear path how to, how to do it because it was an OpenStack uh, specific issue that we had, uh, we just uh, migrate the application in another cluster. But uh, when we do upgrades, we try to, to delete the node and not do any in place uh, upgrades. It's our own hardware, and we have deployed OpenStack. Uh, so the, it, it's our own cloud. It's our own private cloud. Uh, have you seen any issues with Kubernetes from Fedora? Because we are mostly running on more like just like the uh, upstream uh, Sorry, I didn't get the question. Uh, if, if you've seen any issues with Kubernetes, that would be a problem. Um, the only issue. Um, Sometimes no, the only issue that we had it was my. It was an. Sorry, uh, the question. Yes, um, the question was if you have seen any uh, issues uh, with Kubernetes on Fedora because to build Kubernetes uh, we use a more recent uh, GoLang version than uh, the upstream project is using, and no, we haven't seen any. Um, um, the only one was a minor issue to, uh, that was specific to the spec file that was doing a check. And when, uh, when the version was banned from 1.9 to 1.10, the comparison wasn't working because it wasn't using Semver. But other than that, it, we didn't have an issue. The only issue, it's not Fedora specific. Um, uh, it's kind of Fedora specific, is that uh, by default from Project Atomic, uh, Docker uses uh, systemd as a sick group driver. And we have noticed that um, deletion might be a little slower uh, of, of containers when using systemd versus sick group fs. And some features like uh, monitoring the nodes and having the nice graphs in the Kubernetes dashboard don't work with systemd as a sick group driver. 
so we move we changed to use um, cgroupfs Thank you.